Hey, my name is Jana Grete, and I'll be speaking to you today about the outdoor sustainable urban design for the Delonico campus. There are two main things that we will be focusing on, and that's green spaces and land and resource conservation. For green spaces, we will be looking at how to reduce runoff. We'll be doing this by having cisterns and water fountains. We will improve the air quality by having new crops and plants. Hope that some of these plants will attract new pollinators and I'm sure bird species and other creatures as well. And we also hope to raise human interaction appreciation. It's actually been studied that having more green spaces is better for the mental health of the student body. For the land and resource conservation, we'll be focusing on practicing the three R's, which is reduce, reuse, recycle. And the way to do this is we will have bins outside for people to have um, places to throw away their trash that can be recycled and signs to raise awareness to reducing and reusing. Also for the permaculture, we will be looking at using that instead of regular landscaping and localizing the economy with our crops. The current designer layout for the Dahlonega campus features a lot of open fields, a mini forest system and sustainability efforts. Open fields are amazing for the air quality as you can see by the picture provided, it's so beautiful. And of course, there's lots of human appreciation for the open fields. I know the RCC department actually uses the big field to march and things like that. The mini forest system gives us a more diverse ecosystem and learning opportunities. The Dahlonega campus has actually studied how to get biocontrol agents to reduce the harms and effects of the hemlock woolly adelgid. We actually, adelgid, sorry, we actually talked about that earlier in the semester, so it was really cool to see how the material that we get taught ties back into our real life. And the sustainability efforts we have, we have lab research, we have an ecology lab and a water lab, the invasive species project that I just mentioned, and we also have a garden that feeds the community in Lumpkin County. As far as the community garden benefits, we will have food for the community, for farmers markets first to, um, you know, localize the economy, as I mentioned earlier, and for the student body or anybody that needs it, um, you know, any students in need. We will have water and energy conservation efforts from switching to regular um, landscaping to permaculture, as you can see by the little picture that I have provided for you. And we will have the sustainability centers here, which is where we'll put bins for you to recycle and signs for you to get more educated on uh, the three R's. Now, these are the plants that we do plan on planting. We have some plums, cherries, uh, pecan, pecan trees, however you want to say that, potatoes, blueberries, bell peppers, and corn. I really wanted to focus on things that, you know, we would eat and enjoy as a community. And I also put in the cost of what the plants would be. We will have a fountain in the cistern to collect any runoff water when it rains that we can reuse instead of having it go to waste. And like I mentioned, we will have it in a different location than where the garden that's currently at the campus is at now. We will move it to the Health and Natural Science Building just because we already have a sort of open field there and it makes sense for, you know, the garden to be right there. It could be a learning opportunity for the students. And these are the links to my resources, but thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed my talk.